In this video we're going to do something slightly different and this is essentially going to be the review of the past five years of my portfolios. So I can basically explain the reasons why I evolved my portfolio during the years, the mistakes which I did so that you can avoid them and essentially the reason why I made the transitions so that you can learn and uh, basically take inspiration and we're going to use uh, Wayback Machine which is a great uh, free website which enables you to add a URL and uh, you can see the different versions of the website over the span of many years. So we're going to go with uh, the 2016 version of my website and uh, you, you can really see it over here but uh, I had a header with uh, a logo and uh, overall I really try to focus on uh, putting everything in. So the very first mistake which I did and I want you to avoid, uh, actually you, if I click here you can see the header as well. Um, the very first mistake which I did is to add a little bit of everything which uh, kind of uh, also reflected on uh, the time where you know I wasn't really sure where to focus my attention on. So as you can see here I have some uh, logo design and uh, also some uh, uh, mobile tablet um, designs, uh, some UI design for, for the phone, some stationery, brochures, illustrations, um, book design, poster design. So it was all over the place really. Now it looked okay and I spent like so much time in trying to find the best uh, color combinations and you know, the perfect images. And by the way, if you click uh, on one of these projects, it would open up a case study, which unfortunately Wayback Machine isn't catching, so I cannot show you. But uh, essentially it was uh, um, a very simple layout. So two thirds of the screen was an image and you could scroll through many different images showing the case study essentially briefly of the project. But the very first uh, issue here is that no matter how, and this is personal opinion, how good or bad it looks, uh, the most important thing that uh, a business owner is going to look at when evaluating you, if hiring you for a project or for a job position, is going to be how in line you are with the type of work that is required. So if I were to apply to a web design job position where they require me to focus 80% uh, of the time on web designs and maybe 20% of the time on some basic coding and uh, miscellaneous work, uh, this wouldn't be the ideal portfolio to show them because uh, at the first glance, uh, I'm not showing any web design uh, whatsoever apart from maybe these uh, two elements, but these are tablets, so this might be interpreted as an app design. So definitely keep, keep this in mind. And uh, when you're first starting out, it's totally fine to go with an approach like this uh, because you're then going to specialize and also find what uh, you like doing and that uh, um, takes some time, takes some trial and error. So you can start broad and then uh, you're, you're definitely going to, to get work. Like I, I, I used to get <laughs> like work with this portfolio. It's not uh, uh, that's what got me here. But uh, the most important thing to consider is uh, the more specialized and niche down you can be, the better. So let's uh, jump from, uh, I think it was 2016 uh, all the way to 2017. So about uh, uh, one or two years uh, later, I basically changed my portfolio and uh, now I actually realized the mistakes which I did in 2016 of having uh, a portfolio which was all over the place. And uh, I realized that I wanted to focus specifically on designing dashboards and apps. That was my passion. That's what uh, I was uh, looking to get clients for. So as you can see right here, the basic portfolio structure didn't change all that much apart from the header which became uh, uh, white. But um, essentially what I did here is to add uh, immediately dashboards and uh, app designs. So you can see how this uh, immediately was more tailored to the type of client that I was looking for. 
So the client would uh, hop here and even before he clicked uh, on uh, any one of these uh, specific uh, portfolio items, um, he could already see that uh, I was uh, a primarily a designer who dealt with uh, dashboards and apps. So this was a step forward compared to the previous uh, portfolio. And uh, this portfolio actually enabled me to get uh, dashboard and apps uh, projects with more ease, <laughs> not surprisingly, simply because it was more tailored. And uh, I looked at as if I was really specialized just in that because uh, I pretty much was. Now let's move on to the portfolio which uh, I created in early 2020. And uh, I pretty much remained uh, untouched. So essentially, the, from a technicality standpoint, uh, this portfolio was made uh, with uh, WordPress with a template and it was quite hard to change. Every time I had to change uh, some, uh, something specific, I had to rely on uh, a developer which costed money and uh, it was uh, always like a delaying time. And with Squarespace, everything was pretty much drag and drop. So this is a solution which um, uh, I currently recommend that I'm using it myself. Uh, now, as you can see, um, first of all, instead of having just projects right away, I ha actually have a picture of myself. So it gives a more personalized touch uh, as well with a very specific uh, headline, which is I help tech and SaaS businesses grow by designing great products and online experiences. So this gives uh, immediately the idea of what type of businesses I work with and uh, what I do to help them. And of course, book a discovery call, which essentially, if you click on that, uh, it's going to bring to my Calendly, which uh, automatically schedules uh, um, time to speak with me. Now, right uh, after it, uh, you're going to see a few clients uh, uh, that I work with and some projects uh, and I don't really want to focus too much uh, on this because for the most part it's self-explanatory of the design services, which I offer the testimonials and from previous clients, my education, some um, ideas on uh, my design products, as well as my social media presence. But what I really want to focus on uh, is uh, the portfolio section, of course, because uh, uh, over here, you can see that there is a drop down. So we have uh, web apps, web design, mobile apps, and logo design. And uh, essentially, the reason why I divided the portfolio into four different pages compared to just having one where I have everything is because whenever I'm applying for a job which specifically requires me to focus uh, for the most part on web apps, uh, um, I am going to send them this page, which is filled with all of the web apps which I created over the past years, and it's very, very specific. If uh, on the other side, on the other side, if uh, a client is looking for websites, I'm going to send uh, a, the web design portfolio since it's very tailored with uh, all of the websites which uh, I built over the years. So as you can see, I divided it, uh, and this is something that at the start, if you don't have uh, many portfolio items, you won't be able to do. But as you work uh, through the, uh, the years of many projects, you're going to be able to create uh, this segmentation, which is going to be really useful and improve uh, the uh, client conversion rate uh, and uh, essentially enable you to land, especially freelance uh, projects uh, with ease, uh, since you're going to be uh, seen as very specialized in that very area. So that was the main reason why I created this, uh, this division. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, projects all the way from uh, 2015, 2016. And uh, yeah, this was uh, essentially the main reason. So again, guys, uh, keep in mind uh, also to have the contact me section uh, very visible right away. And um, yeah, I hope this, uh, this video was useful. So again, learn from my mistakes uh, and uh, you are going to be able to save so much time.